Now, for more on the latest developments on North Korea, we have joining us Professor Kim Hyunuk from the Korea National Diplomatic Academy. It's uh, good to have you back on the show. Thank you very much. So Pompeo held two radio interviews on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. In one, he said that he hoped uh, for a summit between President Trump and uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un mm -hmm. to take place in early 2019. But then in the other interview, he said there is uh, no time frame on the North's uh, denuclearization uh, process for now, and that is going to be a very long road ahead. Do you think these two statements go together? Can there be a summit without a uh, timeline? Um, you know, after the midterm election, things have changed a lot. Uh, before the midterm election, President Trump himself mentioned that he would not play a time game. And now Pompeo is saying that he would he, he would like he he doesn't want to play, time, you know, time game. But you know, uh, Trump actually wants to have a summit meeting early next year. Uh, you know, Democrats in the Congress is uh, pressuring hard on Trump's policies. And I think uh, one of the many policies, uh, I think President Trump wants to have some substantial outcome. So I think uh, before the, maybe sometime early, uh, the new uh, Congress begins and uh, if there is no outcome about the North Korea policies, I think the Democrats would, you know, argue against Trump's policies on North Korea. So I think President Trump definitely wants to have some achievements about North Korea policies. But, you know, if there is no substantial uh, achievement in denuclearization, I don't think it's possible to have some meeting. So I think this is kind of a mixed situation. You know, Trump wants to have some substantial achievement, but if there's no uh, denuclearization, I don't think he can have a summit meeting early next year. Isn't there one argument, though, that says Trump can, uh, he doesn't need um, further progress on North Korea. He can keep touting the current situation as a success as long as there is no missile testing, as long as there is no nuclear testing. Trump seems happy just to uh, brag about this uh, situation right now anyway. Yeah, that's what he was talking and talking. Uh, you know, but the, uh, the ultimate end point and you know, goal and objective in North Korea policy is not just to, uh, you know, uh, stopping the test of nuclear weapons and missiles. Uh, the goal is to completely dismantle nuclear programs of North Korea. Um, but, you know, things are kind of uh, stalemated now. So many critics inside the United States is kind of looking at this situation as you know, North Korea is uh, trying to uh, deceive the United States again. Mm. Um, you know, the deal is there, the frame of negotiation is still existent, but you know, actually, they should have some kinds of, uh, you know, achievement of uh, denuclearization. That's what they need from President Trump's policy. Well, Washington does seem to be committed, at least, uh, to keep trying on diplomacy, especially after U.S. Defense Secretary uh, Jim Mattis told reporters on Wednesday as well that the joint South Korea-U.S. military exercises named a Fall Eagle, uh, which is scheduled for next spring, it'll, will be uh, scaled down mm -hmm. in light of the diplomatic efforts being made on North Korea. Most other major joint military drills have been uh, either postponed or cancelled uh, over the last uh, few months. But uh, what do you make of this new announcement that the Fallen Eagle will stay, still take place but will be scaled down? Um, he, uh, you know, Secretary Mattis mentioned that this kind of scaling down of Fallen Eagle exercise is because of the denuclearization. Uh, issues, uh, diplomatic, uh, you know, efforts of two countries vis-a-vis -vis North Korea. Um, so in this, among this uh, diplomatic process, uh, there should be uh, scaling down of uh, joint military exercises. But this is definitely different from the, uh, this year's uh, joint military exercise, which has been cancelled or postponed, postponed, as you mentioned. Uh, we have to look at what happened at the, uh, you know, security consultative meeting in, I think it was October 30th or 31st this year, uh, South Korea and the U.S. agreed upon the possible transfer of the wartime military option, uh, you know, operational control uh, back, to the, back to the South Korean government. And in order for that, one important condition is that South Korea has to prove that it has a military capability of, uh, you know, to, 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 uh, to operate, uh, you know, uh, you know mil military capability in the wartime situations without uh, the United States Army. Um, so uh, in order for that, they need to take a look at and test that kinds of 
you know, capabilities of South Korea in the joint military exercises. Uh, in order to uh, make South Korean military ready, uh, if they are ready for the transfer of Afcon, wartime Afcon transfer, they need to continue the joint military exercises. So I think that they're still having it, even though that's pretty much scaled down. So, you know, in the diplomatic situations, they want to scale it down or cancel it, but for the Afcon transfer, they need, to, they need a joint military exercise to test the South Korean military capabilities. That's what happened. So you're saying South Korea and the U.S. needed to make the Korean Peninsula safe, but North Korea, on the other hand, has been mm. uh, uh, vociferously uh, mm. against these uh, joint military exercises in the past. Do you think they'll be able to accept a scaled-down version of this? Won't they object to the fact that uh, they want it cancelled altogether? Uh, well, on the surface, it seems like uh, just uh, you know, having that joint military exercises would make North Korea not happy. But I think if uh, North Korea is very wise, they would welcome that because that uh, North Korea has been arguing for so many years that you know, South Korea has to have its own military outcome and the U.S. Uh, you know, extended deterrent to, deterrent, deterrent to South Korea and also uh, the outcome suggested by the United States should be transferred back to South Korea. So, uh, you know, throughout all these kinds of uh, series of joint military exercises, what we are trying to do is to make South Korea ready for transfer of outcome back to the South Korea military from the United States, which I think North Korea should be happy about. Mm. Uh, there are also now reports that suggest that Washington is in contact with North Korea to, uh, to hold this uh, high-level summits that have been much delayed. Mm. Uh, that's between uh, uh, the uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo mm. and possibly uh, Kim Jong-chul uh, of uh, North mm. Korea. The date of these uh, reports suggest that they will happen next week even. Mm. What do you reckon, Professor? Do you think they are ready to sit down and have these uh, uh, high-level talks now? Um. I think uh, because they want to have some meeting early next year, I think uh, they will have the high-level talk this time. Uh, this is not uh, Pompeo's visit to Pyongyang. Kim Young chul is visiting Washington, D.C. So I think uh, this time, you know, even though they have not come up to a specific agreement about, you know, things, uh, I think they will have uh, the high-level uh, talk. But the thing is, what kinds of agreement they can have in the high-level talk? Uh, for now, I think uh, the U.S. side has uh, pretty much you know, soften their demands on North Korea. Uh, in the summit meeting, before the summit meeting, uh, the U.S. said that, you know, the, the, you know Mike Pence, Mike Pence uh, the vice president, said that uh, North Korea doesn't need to uh, finish declare, declaring its all the nuclear capabilities before the summit meeting. What North Korea needs to do is to be ready for the timeline and plans for uh, declare, declaration and verifications and dismantling of all the nuclear weapons of North Korea. Uh, and, and, and they will be happy, they will be okay for the North Korean side. Um, North Korea would be welcome it because that's uh, pretty much, you know, you know back down and softened uh, demands by the United States. The issue is then, uh, would the U.S. be willing to give what North Korea wants to get from the United States? Mm -hmm. North Korea has been asking, for example, the end of war declaration, um, you know, soft, you know, you know, in lifting sanctions, all that kind of things, which I don't think the U.S. would be willing to give to North Korea. Um, maybe in return, uh, maybe U.S. would be willing to give some kinds of uh, things like establishing some liaison office in Pyongyang and Washington, D.C., for example, which I don't think North Korea would be happy about. So all these kinds of issues would be some, you know, focal points that we have to take a look at at this high-level talk between Pompeo and Kim Jong-chul in, in, in the United States. Let's move on to some other developments that have uh, been taking place here on the Korean Peninsula. So today, the two Koreas uh, connected a military road on the either side of the border in the demilitarized zone. Mm. And that's in order to help the uh, efforts to recover war remains. Now, this is the first time roads like this are being connected mm. since the end of the Korean War. How significant is this uh, move to reconnect this road? Um, yeah, this is, I think, very important, symbolically important. Uh, they began uh, disarming the DMZ area, uh, destroying the uh, GPs. And finally, they have agreed upon, you know, connecting the roads uh, inside the DMZ, 
kind of connecting the, you know, disconnected the worlds uh, in the north and south, kind of making, the, you know, reconnect it. Very symbolically important. Um, I think this will be finished by the end of this year. Uh, means that, uh, you know, war remains are recovered. Uh, the symbol of warfare between uh, North and South Korea, the DMZ, finally reconnected one to one. Uh, when you just take a look at the DMZ, this is just the beginning of uh, the end of war. I mean, they're just beginning the processes to make the DMZ kind of peace zone. Uh, if possible, this will be just a first step. Maybe they will just uh, reconnect many roads inside DMZ, which means that DMZ itself would not be just DMZ, but it will be the area in which, you know, people in North and South can, you know, you know walk across freely to North and South. This is very important initial step, it's a very important symbolically, I think. You actually mentioned the word symbolically there <laughs> quite a few times there. So mm -hmm. it is a very symbolic gesture, but actually how like, significant is it in uh, uh, realistic terms? Because uh, the concern is, I think, for some people that is, if they start reconnecting roads, can this lead to some sort of violation of UN sanctions? Uh, as I said, the uh, sanctions in North Korea is pretty much limited to the economic issues. So, uh, for example, some cooperations and exchanges between North and South, that's limited to the economic uh, uh, area, uh, kind of uh, the issues that, uh, n that makes the South Korea to give a lot of, uh, you know, monetary assets to the North. That's the uh, target and object of sanctions in North Korea. This is uh, something that's, um, you, know, you know, kind of disarming South Korea and North Korea. Uh, which is not related directly to the sanctions of North Korea. Uh, but the reason I said this, this is very symbolic and important is that even though they have a connected road within DMZ, uh, the substantial, you know, peacemaking between North and South Korea would not be possible until denuclearization is complete and peace treaty is signed uh, so that, um, you know, legally and substantially South Korea and North Korea uh, Korean war is over, they're uh, having a normal relationship, that will be something that would uh, make the uh, situations more realistically peaceful. Uh, but still, uh, you know, connecting the world, disconnected the world within DMZ, that itself is very symbolically, symbolically important, I think. South Korea is continuing its uh, efforts to uh, have these cooperation projects with the North. And in fact, the South Korean government has uh, approved funds of almost uh, 4 million U.S. dollars mm. worth uh, towards this, uh, these causes. These uh, projects include, uh, of course, uh, forestry disease management, reconnection of communication lines, uh, recovery of war remains, mm. and also archaeological excavations as well. And there are also plans to uh, further connect uh, motorways in the future as well. But recently, uh, Pompeo warned uh, uh, South Korea that inter-Korean projects should not get ahead of the denuclearization process of North Korea. So where do we write this progress of uh, inter-Korean projects here? How far have they gone and do they overstep, uh, risk overstepping a mark? Well, I think, uh, you know, they have just formed a working group and uh, they had the first meeting in Washington, D.C. Um, and this is a very good meeting because throughout this meeting, even though two countries have been balancing very well between uh, north-south relations and denuclearization, even though s some parts there were some, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, policy coordinations, and some parts of denuclearization was kind of getting ahead. Sometimes uh, north-south relations was kind of getting ahead. But I think that was the process of coordinations. And I think we have working group now, and there will really f in, uh, form coordinations about their uh, policy priority, I think. Um, and and, and they're doing fine because, uh, you know, South Korean government, they definitely uh, desperate about the North-South attack and economic cooperations, but they're not stupid. You know, South Korean government knows very well the importance of denuclearization. So even though uh, in, in, in strategic terms they would sometimes prioritize something over the other, but you know, ultimately and in long term they want to be balanced between North-South attack and denuclearization. And, and I think the U.S. also knows that, so I don't think there will be any problems on that. Well, we're out of time, so I think that's why we'll have to wrap it up. Thank you for coming on the show, as always. Thank you very much.